Hi everyone, so this summer I've had the privilege of working on an amazing project with the Dynamical Systems Laboratory of NYU Tandon. It's been such a cool project and it's been such an enriching experience for me because every day I've been able to work on this project that I feel like brings me closer to my hometown, my home city of New York, every time I work with it. And I'm really excited to share with you guys a little bit more about what I've been doing. And it's going to be an amazing story that takes us from the cultural hub of Brooklyn to the bright lights of Manhattan, to some of the most diverse streets in the world in Queens, the shores of Staten Island, and finally to the beautiful and scenic gardens of the Bronx. doing this summer is trying to investigate if the spillover theory of crimes is applicable to New York City. You might be wondering what exactly is the spillover theory of crimes. So the spillover theory and spillover effects refer to instances where increases in crimes in one community cause subsequent increases in crimes in nearby communities in the near future for example. So you can tell how important this type of research could be for New York City, right? You could imagine how impactful it would be to know which communities are connected to each other in terms of crimes. And that's what this whole project was about. We're trying to see if there's any connections in crimes between adjacent neighborhoods so that we can better understand the spread of crimes within New York City. For example, if there's increases in crimes in Jackson Heights, Queens in one month, we want to know will that cause Elmer's Queens to be at risk in crimes in the next month. So our research has tremendous potential to help not only just New York City residents, but to better understand the urban landscape of crime in the United States as a whole. And you, this would help us make perhaps evidence-based policy that could help reduce crime rates in, the, in New York, but also possibly be applied to the United States and other urban cities as well to help tackle things like the gun epidemic in the United States. And especially as New Yorkers, we've seen no shortage of crime in the last few years. Just last year in a subway station like this one, there was a shooting on the N-Train line, on a train that so many of us take to school to go to NYU. And that's why I feel like this project means so much to me because it'll help us keep our community safer and help us just have a start and to start a conversation on how we can better understand why crimes are spreading in New York City and how they do as well. get into a little bit about how we decided to investigate this and how we went about answering these types of questions to determine if there's any spillover effects between communities in New York City. So obviously for a project of this nature, history would have to be our best friend and luckily we had just the right resources we needed to be able to do this project. So there's actually an open source database called NYC Open Data and basically what this database has is it has decades worth of crime data from all of New York City's 77 delete, um, police precincts regarding what types of crimes occurred and how many crimes occurred each day in all the different police precincts. And it, it had a ton of data that was really helpful for us to use. So basically what we did was we took data from each of these police precincts, right? And there's 77 um, different police precincts that I mentioned before, just like this one that I'm in front of, the 105th precinct that serves Queens Village, like the um, community I live in. And we were able to get data from all these different police precincts and create time series out of all of them, right? So basically what we did was we started off with burglaries and we created 77 different time series. One for um, each month of the year from 2006 to 2022. And with each time series, we filled in data using Python. And it was amazing because I've never used um, coding software before, especially Python. And using it was so helpful because it was able to compile data for us in ways that would take us months to do by hand. So using um, the data from the police database, as well as Python, we were able to create time series that showed us how many different types of burglaries had occurred in each police precinct over every month of the last 16 years. And with using that, now we had a bunch of data that would help us kind of create a holistic image of the crime rates occurring in New York City over the last 16 years, which was really great data. And now all we needed to do was to compare these time series and see if there's any connections between each. And the way we were able to do that was by using Tigramite, which is a Python package that is really, really useful in analyzing time series and finding if there's any causal relations between them. 
So what it does is that it analyzes all the different time series data and it compares them in such a way to see if any one of them are impacting each other. And it's such a, um, it's such a great algorithm and it's been used in countless types of research to see if there's any causal relations between different types of data sets. And it's very profound. It uses something called the PCMCI plus algorithm that um, I won't get into too much about in this video, but it really is useful for seeing if there's any causal relations between different sets of data. So right now I'm in Jackson Heights, Queens. And now I'm in Elmer's, Queens. And you might be wondering, why am I in two places at once? Well, that's because Jackson Heights and Elmer's, Queens were actually two of the neighborhoods that were due to be in spillover effects from the research we were doing. And I feel like that's really um, promising in terms of some of the results we've gotten because these two neighborhoods are connected to each other in ways that are more profound than we can think of, right? So Jackson Heights, Queens, it's the home of so many immigrant communities. It's one of the most diverse populations and one of the most diverse cities in New York City. And because of that, like just when you go down the street, you hear so many different language, languages being spoken, you know, and it's not just one language that's spoke in Jackson Heights, Queens. And same goes with Elmers, you know, it serves such a diverse population of people. Like when the pandemic first started in New York City, Elmers Hospital is one of the most important hospitals in the city just because of the sheer amount of patients it had taken in and just how much of New York City it had represented. So the fact that these areas are connected to each other in terms of crime, it says a lot about how we can make sure we plan for a better future for New York City. And sorry about that. And although there's a lot more um, analysis that needs to be done on making sure that these areas are connected to each other in terms of true causality, it's just amazing to think about how places that are so close to my home and so close to my life could be impacting each other and impacting our city overall in ways that we haven't thought about before. So studying this more and learning more about this connection between these two towns can make sure that we make sure that this place that's so important, that these, both of these places that are so important to immigrants and to the overall structure of New York City are preserved for the future and that they and that they continue to thrive and support the population they support today. So in conclusion, out of 12 pairs of police precincts that Tigger and Mike told us were in causal relationships, six of them were actually seen to be right next to each other, which seems like very promising results because it hints that there could be some sort of spillover effects going on. And as I mentioned, Jacksonites and Elmers were one of those six pairs of communities and other pairs of communities included Tremont and Claremont in the Bronx, for example, and the South Shore of Staten Island and Tompkinsville, for example, as some of the other pairs. But there still is more data analysis that we're working on in the lab to make sure that what we're seeing is true causality and that there's no other underlying factors that might be giving us any false senses of causality. So overall, our data looks promising right now, but there still is a bunch of um, just a few more steps that we need to do to make sure that what we're seeing is actually um, legitimate results. And if our data holds, it has really, um, it holds really great promise for us to learn more about this grand scheme of crimes in New York City and how we can address those problems within our own city as well. And I thank you guys so much for watching my video on my summer research experience. And yeah, thanks so much.